Hey, gang, it's me, Dr. Steve, and I'm joined again today by my good friend, Ross Givens, who has the inside scoop on what our insider trading deep state politicians are all up to. But not only that, he knows how the system works so well, he wants to help you profit off of their knowledge. We had a free training yesterday that Ross gave to our audience on how they can trade like Pelosi, but actually legally and ethically. Gang, so many of you came to this training and the feedback was so awesome. I mean, I just said, we've got to have Ross back and he's got to do another free training session, which he is. He's doing tomorrow. Ross is doing another free training for our audience on Saturday the 15th. So click on that link below to register. I promise you it's going to be a weekend that will change your life. Ross, man, welcome back and congrats on such an amazing session yesterday. Hey, Dr. Steve, I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, I was, re I was really uh, happy to see all your people come and get such good feedback. So it it's great to see people take to this and, and uh, you know, realize the opportunities that are out there. Yeah, it's awesome. I, and unfortunately, I had, I had those technical difficulties, uh, so I wasn't able to participate as much as I hope. If you weren't there, gang, people could hear me, but they couldn't see me. It was awesome. Uh, I couldn't hear anybody. But man, dude, the feedback we got, you rocked it. Our audience went nuts over this stuff. You know, before, before we touch on how you tap into Pelosi's trading secrets for our mm -hmm. own benefit, right? Sure. I, I'm curious on your take with what we've been seeing with this, just this monumental collapse of Bud Light mm -hmm. and Anheuser-Busch, this massive backlash against their whole woke trans campaign. Of course, they've lost, what, six, seven billion dollars in market value this week. Is this just a short-term little reaction or, or, do, or do you think the stock could fall further? What, what, are, we, what are we gonna see from this? Well, unfortunately for investors, people own this stock. I think this is just the beginning. Uh, you know, when it comes to investing in stocks, we like to use precedent. So what's happened the last time something like this hit the market? And the, the only precedent we really have of something like this in recent years is Disney. Now, yeah. if you're not familiar, I mean, most of us know that Disney's gone full woke the last few years. Grandma, Essentially yeah. what happened, they had a CEO, a guy named Bob Iger brilliant guy, ran a company for 15 years. Um, the stock went from $20 to $200 while he's there. Well, he eventually steps down. New CEO comes in, Bob Chappick, and this guy brings in all the crazy wokeness. Now, this guy in 18 months has destroyed more than half the value of Dang. this franchise, 200 <laughs> billion. But Look what's interesting, that. and I've put it here on the chart, is where Bob was selling, the original, Mr. Iger was selling the stock. Ooh. So he kind of knew what was coming. You know, he'd been running this company for 15 years. He's got hundreds of millions of dollars worth of stock. And once Chappick takes over, these two kind of had a falling out over a lot of his woke policies. And, you know, he's just bowing and apologizing to all these people and against DeSantis and this bill. God forbid there, there's a bill that protects young children. Right? He's going to lose <laughs> his mind over that. And, and, but, but, you lunatic. You know, well, I talk a lot about the insider stuff, you know, this, and this just shows you what you can see tracking their trades. Iger dumps something like a quarter of a billion dollars of this stock Dang. right at the high and saves himself. So this, and this is, this is, this is your approach, isn't it? You, you yeah. guys uh focus in on what companies what corporation guys who are on the board what they're doing with their stock right and you sort of mirror it is that with the, their uh, own money yeah because right. that really tells the tale right if you really believe in something you're going to put your own money towards it if you don't right. you're not and so no matter what they get out and say on television if they're buying their own stock in six and seven figure amounts their own money in their own account that's a very uh, a bullish thing likely they think good things are coming because they know more than us on the other hand, Iger kind of knew the route Chappick was going. He kind of had a feel for, oh no, here's what he's doing. He's pushing, you know, all this trans stuff and the gay stuff into these children's movies. And I don't think our audience is going to love that very much. And so he got out of the stock. So he flashed you just the opposite as a giant warning. Hey, it's it, the get, get out while the getting's good in Disney stock. Again, just uh, long term as we're, we're thinking about our finances, but also about our nation, you know, um, do you think, I mean, looking at charts like this, does it, does it look like Woke Inc. has an expiration date to it? I mean, if there's no market for this or, or actually it's worse, it's worse. There's actually a more of an anti market 
uh, for this, then doesn't that mean um, that it's just a fad that promises to disappear at some point? Well, like you, I, I, I certainly hope so. Um, you know, my father used to say, right is right even when no one is doing it. And wrong is wrong even when everyone is doing it. Yeah. And I just believe, and I, you, I know you and I agree, these large companies using their power to push their own agenda, their own beliefs on people is just wrong. Right. Even if it's trendy and cool now and they get, yay, good for you, Disney, on Twitter. Um, and especially companies uh, like Disney who have, can have such an impact on, on young children. And so right. what we're seeing or likely to see with B anheuser Bush stock, I think is a wake-up call to say, look, don't count to these people. The silent majority, like we're all talking about, this is how they're going to react. They, I mean, they, right. they cut your company in half. Wow. Yeah. You know, we talk a lot about creating a parallel economy here on the channel. Um, but that, you know, it doesn't just mean making money. You have to protect it, right? As, as we can see. How can people avoid owning these kind of stocks that can lead to these massive losses? Again, it's not just Anheuser-Busch, as you show. It's Disney. It's Netflix. It's Facebook. What can, what can our audience do? Well, you know, if you follow this stuff, like I teach people to do in this training, sometimes they'll flash warning signals. You know, the 15-year CEO selling $250 million worth of stock in two months, that's a warning signal. But you don't always get that. Right. The easiest thing, look, there's 6,000 publicly traded companies out there. You don't have to own Disney, Amazon, Google, the same ones everybody else does. Just focus on the ones that are flashing you buy signals, right? When mm -hmm. the CEO and the CFO and the board members and the marketing director are all buying their stock with their own money and their own account, that's just generally a really good sign that they believe good things are coming and they have access to information before everyone else. You know, I talked about like the pharmaceutical example last time we chatted, right? If you knew your drug was about to get FDA approval, you could go buy the stock and make a ton of money. If you're Apple and you know they're about to release the iPhone and the world has no idea what's coming, you buy in advance and you make a ton of money on the stock. So by focusing uh, on those companies where the insiders and the company people running that company are actively putting their own money in, who are eating their own cooking, uh, that's going to generally keep you in the stocks with the greatest chance of, of you know, not imploding like this. Right, right, right. And it, uh, just, I mean, obviously the past year has been pretty bad for the stock mm -hmm. market, right? We've had the record inflation, interest rates, huge layoffs. Um, uh, is, is it a bad time to own stocks? Is this, or should, should I just kind of, should I just uh, grab some gold and, and then just you know, <laughs> <laughs> build the mattress, my bunker? <laughs> honestly, just the opposite. I think it's a great time. This is what a lot of newer investors don't, don't realize, but the right. stock market is a discounting mechanism. And all that means is prices are based on where people believe numbers are going to be in the future. So if you buy Apple stock, you're not, it's not valued based on how much money they made last quarter last year. The value of that stock is based on what the market thinks they're going to do next year and the year right. after and the year after. That's the discounting mechanism. So I say that to tell you everything's priced in. Stocks in the general market are where they are because of the inflation and, and, and the layoffs and everything we've seen. So all that's known. And the only thing that pulls stocks down is when things are worse than expected. So COVID, the market fell 30% in a month. Why? No one could have seen that coming. It wasn't forecasted in, right? 2022 is terrible. Why? People didn't see the inflation coming. We didn't expect it. It was worse than expected. All that's out of the way now. And so this is the beginning of a new bull market and really a great time to buy. And, and a lot of people say, well, when inflation's down and, and the economy looks good, that's when I'll get into stocks. The market's going to be up 50% by then. You, you, mm. you really want to get in at that, that peak bearish moment when things are as bad as they're going to get. The, the, the March of 2009, the February 2020. That's where the low is. And we're already seeing stocks begin to rise and, and the market's put in a low. The news is getting better. So I, I would say it's actually a very good time to be buying stocks. And the approach we teach uh, takes you a step further by identifying some of the best, the ones that the people there are kind of tipping their hat going, I want to buy a couple shares. I think things are coming. 
Yeah, yeah. I, I just looked at my portfolio yesterday for the first time in months. I, I, I just, oh, it was so bad. Yeah, but it was all green. It looked, it looked, it looked good. Even, even bitcoins going up um, and uh, Ethereum and the like. So, so give, just give us a taste of what everyone could expect tomorrow. Give us a little taste of how you know we can learn how to cut through all the BS and start trading like Pelosi. Yeah, so we talked about Pelosi before because, I mean, she's probably the most corrupt out of there, right? They've got access to information they use. She's made $140 million trading. Oh. But she's she's an anomaly. She's one out of Congress. The rest of those bozos, they're not, they're not, they're not all as good. Corporate insiders, on the other hand, have a fantastic track record. 20 plus years of calling bottoms, getting in stocks before they go 500, 1,000% higher. Um, Trades like Iger getting out right there at the top, right. you know. So right. all we do is we track the buying and selling of these insiders. And people don't realize you can do this. But if you were an insider, that just means a CEO, a CF, you know, a top level person at that company with inside information. Anytime you buy or sell your stock, you have to report that to the SEC within 48 hours. But those that's all of public information. Right. So we've got a system that scans all this, tracks it, and we just look, hey, what stocks are insiders buying right now? This one's a little, oh, look, this stock, the CEO just went in for half a million and the marketing director went in for, you know, all this money piling in. Um, and oftentimes it, it flags positive news the market doesn't know about yet because they know. What are the earnings right. going to be? I don't know. Does the CFO know? Yeah, he literally fills out the earnings report. Exactly. So if he's putting a million dollars in his stock two weeks before they report earnings, I think at worst, it's probably not going to be a bad report. Right. 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 I mean, that right. would be insane for him to do right. that. So right. it just gives you a big edge and, and allows you uh, to see where the people in the know with the most information are putting their money and we just follow along. So we train them. We train our members on that. We're doing another session on Saturday. Uh, I, I love seeing your audience on Thursday. They were fantastic. Just a, yeah. a great group of patriots, and they got it immediately. I uh, love seeing the feedback, and we're going to do it again. So we're going to show them how to find this stuff. There's an SEC database you can track stuff. It's free to access online. I'll show you where that is. We show them the things you want to look for, things you want to look out for. It's sort of the, the approach we've been taking for six or seven years. It's produced such a good track record. Oh, it's so awesome. And it and that 48 hour time period where they have to report, that's in stark contrast to what members of Congress have to report, right? Yeah. They, what's their yeah, time? Five days for them. <laughs> yeah. Go for, they get themselves a little buffer before the public realizes they get it yeah. early. Right, right. Exactly. Right. They bought and sold by that time. Yeah. 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 And, and it, it probably retired half of them. But Oh man, this is great. Gang, uh, seriously, thousands of you uh, were there at the free training on Thursday. Uh, I would, even with my technical difficulties was there, but I mean, the feedback that we got was so amazing. Um, you heard it. Ross has agreed to do another free training tomorrow, Saturday. Uh, do you know what time uh, tomorrow? Ross? Yeah, it's 10 a.m. Eastern. So it's nine o'clock central. So for you West Coasters, uh, I apologize a little bit early, but hey, Saturday, I got two young kids. I got stuff to do. <laughs> sure. So, uh, well, we're appreciative of you doing it to begin with. This is, yeah. this is awesome. I told them I would. If it filled up, you know, I know some people couldn't get in. The, the software kind of limits how many attendees we right. have. So we wanted to do it again to be sure everybody had access to stuff because it's, it's just too valuable. Um, you know, it, it, people need to be aware, made aware of this and how they can do it. So 10 a.m. Um, Eastern time, Saturday morning. 10 a.m. Eastern, gang. Trust me. Trust me. You do not want to miss this. This is an absolutely amazing opportunity to build your own parallel economy. All right. This is your own parallel economy. And you're going to learn how to do that by trading like Pelosi, but legally and ethically. So click on the link below to register. Seating, as you heard, seating is limited. You'll actually see it. Well, where I saw It'll, it, it has a limit of how many people can come in when you click on and and uh, and you you go tomorrow. So seating's limited. Don't wait. Click on the link and be prepared to be absolutely blown away at learning Ross's stock trading secrets. Ross, man, you're the best. Thanks so much, brother. Thanks, Dr. Steve. <laughs>